friends! Welcome back for our next chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Today is hat day, so I'm rocking my Harry Potter hat. I want to see what kind of hats you guys are wearing to help celebrate Tuesday, our hat day for Chickasaw Elementary. So send me some pictures. I'd love to see them. Um, we're going to dive into chapter four, The Keeper of the Keys. But before we do that, I want to review what happened in chapter three the last time we met. If you'll remember, Harry started getting all these letters. Nobody really knows who they're from because his aunt and uncle won't let him read the letters that he's been given. But he's gotten tons and tons and tons. They were coming through the letterbox. They came through the fireplace. They were even in the eggs that Aunt Petunia was using to cook. She'd crack open an egg and there would be a letter inside. So all these magical letters just started showing up out of nowhere and Harry's not really sure what they're about but they are addressed to him. His aunt and uncle are obviously not happy about this because they keep taking all of his letters and won't let him read them. Uncle Vernon even burned most of the letters in the fire. Then he packed up the family, put them in the car, and they drove off to the sea and they're staying in a little shack by the ocean trying to hide from all of these letters. So in chapter four, I hope we'll find out a little bit more about who might be sending these letters and why they're being sent to Harry. All right, here we go. Chapter four, the keeper of the keys. Boom, they knocked again. Dudley jerked wide awake. Where's the cannon? He said stupidly. There was a crash behind them and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Who's there? He shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause, then smash. The door was hit with such force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard, but you could make out his eyes glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching terrified behind Uncle Vernon. And here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. You'll look a lot like your dad, but you've got your mom's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny rasping noise. I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, uh, shut up, Dursley, you great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's head, bent it into a knot as easily as if it had been made of rubber, and threw it into a corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back on the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to you. Got something for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it'll taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake with Happy Birthday Harry written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on the way to his mouth, and what he said instead was, Who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, huh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say to something stronger if you had... I'd not say no to something stronger if you've got it in mind. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in it, and he snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light, and Harry felt the warmth wash over him as though he had sunk into a hot bath. 
the giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began taking all sorts of things out of the pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of sausage, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig of before starting to make tea. Soon, the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great pudding of a son doesn't need fattening anymore, Dursley. Don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, and as nobody seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid, he said. Everyone does. And like I told you, I'm keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know all about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quietly, quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them that should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought... Thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did you ever wonder where your parents learned it all? All what? asked Harry. All what? Hagrid thundered. Well, now wait just a second. He had leapt to his feet. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school, after all, and his marks weren't bad. Well, I know some things, he said. I can, you know, do math and stuff. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, About our world, I mean, your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley, he boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like Mimble Wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mom and dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? M my mom and dad were famous? Were they? You don't know. You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are? he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look that Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him, never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him. I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it. Dursley, and you've kept it from him all these years? Kept what from me? said Harry eagerly. Stop. I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, uh, go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on a sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good one, I'd say, once you've been trained up a little. With a mum and dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope, addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederation of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, 
We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than January 31st. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, What does it mean, they await my owl? Galloping Gorgons, that reminds me, said Hagrid, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And from yet another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl, a real, live, rather ruffled-looking owl, a long quill, and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note that Harry could read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, given Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well, Hagrid. <coughs> Excuse me. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped it in his beak, went to the door, and threw the owl out into the storm. And then he came back and sat down as though this was as normal as talking on the telephone. All right, so we'll pause right there, and we'll come back later on today with the rest of Chapter 4. I hope you're enjoying it. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.